Ricky G Off-Road and today we're going to talk about how to properly tune the bump stops on your Jeep vehicle, Wrangler, whether it's a JL, JK, TJ, LJ, or your XJ Cherokee, we're going to talk about how to properly tune the bump stops on your suspension so that the suspension works properly. So we want to start regardless of what vehicle you have, whether it's a, a JK, whether it's an XJ, a JL, or whatever it is, there are some general principles here that we want to discuss in regards to bump stopping. This is one of those topics I find again after 20 plus years of building these vehicles. I think it's a very simple subject, uh, but I find it's a very misunderstood subject to this day. There's a lot of controversy, a lot of misunderstanding about bump stops. So let's talk about some general principles first. You have them in your vehicle from the factory. They've all got bump stops front and rear, but those bump stops are tuned to the factory parameters, the factory tire size, the factory wheels, no lift, stock ride height, etc. They're tuned for that. So when we spend money, we lift our vehicle, we put bigger wheels and tires on it, it's amazing to me how many people will spend that money to modify the Jeep, but they won't spend a little bit to properly tune the bump stops. I, I've never understood that. It's a very important, very fundamental aspect of suspension tuning, and so we're going to talk about how to do that. Most lift kits out there, at least your better lift kits, some of your budget kits don't give you anything, everything that you need for your suspension to be done properly, but your better kits will include some sort of extended bump stops. They're pretty general. It's usually a one size fits all or maybe a, the bump stops in those kits are tuned for whatever they generally think people are gonna do. But the parameters on your particular Jeep and the next guy's Jeep are gonna be different. So therefore the need, if we want our suspension tuned correctly, the need for bump stop tuning is going to vary from Jeep to Jeep. And so we wanna address that here today and talk about how to do that so that you can tune those bump stops to the individual parameters that you've decided are going to be on your particular Jeep. So bump stops, again, what they're for is to create a stopping point. So your suspension is going to move up and down as you drive or as you wheel, and it's more or less depending on bigger bumps, smaller bumps, whether the sway bar is disconnected or not, the tire is going to move up and down. What the, the job of the bump stops is to create a point where that tire coming up and the suspension is compressing, your springs and shocks are compressing, there comes a point where the bump stops are going to physically stop that suspension up travel from being able to go any further. And that's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. If you don't have bump stops, you can over compress your springs or shocks, uh, you can have your tires hitting your fenders and creating damage to the tires, the fenders, or the suspension components. So we want bump stops in the suspension. They're an important and just a fundamental part of any good suspension system. One example that comes to mind is a good friend of mine years ago built a, a really big Cherokee on 37 inch tires. Spent a lot of money on the suspension, the build, and you know, fender trimming and making room for big tires a lot of money in it and we went on our first trail ride and I said hey you know aren't you going to tune the bump stops on that Jeep and he said oh, I'm not going to worry about it it'll be fine we went out on our first trail ride in that vehicle and the very first obstacle that that Jeep came to the suspension flexed and articulated and it, it had so much flex and articulated enough with those big tires that the tires jammed into the fenders front and rear the tires came in contact so hard with the fenders that the Jeep was stuck. It wasn't hung up on the obstacle, it, the Jeep was stuck on itself. The tires were jammed so hard in the fenders that he couldn't back up, he couldn't drive forward, it was just stuck. So we had to winch the Jeep off of that obstacle to get the suspension to unflex so that he could go again. And you know, for an afternoon's worth of bump stop tuning and a few a few dollars, he could have avoided that. So that's that's what we want. We don't want to be out on the trail with our cool trail ready Jeep and be stuck because we don't tune the bump stops properly. Now I find there are a lot of a lot of misconceptions and objections when it comes to bump stops. I've talked to thousands of people over the years and, and 
we talk about lifts, lifts and bump stops and they're looking at a certain kid or, and it doesn't have the bump stops and I'll ask them, well, what are you going to do for your bump stops? And they'll say, oh, I'm not going to mess with that. And when I ask why, they will tell me, well, they don't want to limit their up travel. They don't want to increase the bump stop because they're afraid it will limit the up travel. Well, there's some truth to that, but bump stops do live at a limit up travel. That's what they're designed to do. The question is, how much do we limit the up travel? A lot of guys have a misconception that by extending the bump stop, they're going to unnecessarily limit the up travel, and they're going to lose travel that they could otherwise be using on the trail. And that's, of course, there's no reason to unnecessarily limit up travel. But the point that a lot of people don't realize is when you look at their Jeep, they, they just take a look at it if they really haven't thought about this or been maybe they're new to the Jeep game. And they may look at this tire defender clearance and there's, you know, eight inches of clearance in this case or ten inches of clearance. There's a lot of room. But they look inside the coil at the bump stop. If it's bump stop properly, there may only be three or four inches that they can see of gap between the bump stops, the immediate thought is, that's ridiculous. Why would I put that much bump stop in there? I'm just limiting my up travel. Well, at the end of the day, it's important to understand big tires limit up travel. What most people don't understand is the bigger the tire they put on the Jeep, the bigger tire is going to limit the up travel. You have a certain fender well opening size and you're trying to fit, for example purposes, you're trying to fit a tire into that fender. Uh, now if we make the fender well bigger, we have more room, but on, if it's a stock size fender and you make, the, make it bigger, you got to have a certain amount of room for that tire to move in and out of that fender. So bigger tires limit up travel. It's such a simple concept, but so many people have a problem understanding it. They will think that, well, if I'm going to fit a bigger tire, I'll just put a bigger lift on the Jeep. How much lift do I need to fit a certain tire size? I get that question a lot. Well, more lift will move the tire away from the fender, which will cause it to rub on the fender less often, but it's not going to prevent the tire from rubbing on the fender. The job of stopping that tire from hitting the fender is the job of the bump stops. I had a customer one time that called. He had a TJ Wrangler and he had a two and a half inch lift. He'd been off road and the tires were hitting the fenders. And he, he was asking, what should I do? What do I need to do to fix this so the tires don't rub? And I said, well, you can either change the parameters on your Jeep, which is you can go with a different aftermarket Highline fender and make more room for that bigger tire on a smaller lift. You can add a small body lift and move that up a little bit more so that tire's got more room. And that's a big thing these days. We're doing low center of gravity suspension builds more than ever. We're not lifting these Jeeps big. We want to keep them low, keep a low center of gravity and create more room in the fender well instead of lifting it larger and trying to make that work. Because even on a taller lift, when you put a bigger tire in there, you lift it up taller, but if you're going to flex that or bottom the suspension out without any extra bump stop, when that tire goes all the way up into that fender well, it still doesn't fit. Whether you have a stock or a two inch lift or a six inch lift, if that tire is going to go up in there, too small is too small in the fender well. So we want to make more room ideally to do that. I told him, so change your parameters, you know, and well, high lines were too expensive. He didn't want to do high line fenders. He didn't want to do a body lift. And that's a whole nother discussion uh, that I've had thousands of times over the last 20 years on body lifts. He didn't want to change them. So he wanted a lot of up travel and flex, but he didn't want his tires to rub. And I said, well, here's what you need to do is take those 33s off and go back to a 30 inch tire. And now you just, a, a smaller tire will go up there a lot farther and you can have a lot more suspension up travel. And that's when he started to get the point. No, I don't want to do 30s because I didn't build this. I didn't lift it to put keep 30s on it. I want bigger tires. Well, yes, you do. You know, there's multiple reasons we do that. 
There are advantages to bigger tires. Bigger the diameter of the tire, the easier it rolls over certain obstacles. There's the bigger tires do that. Bigger tires are the one thing that create more ground clearance, not only on the entire body of the Jeep, but under the differentials as well. So we want our big tires, and, and even if it's, you know, there's a lot of guys out there now more than ever that will actually admit that they want bigger tires just because they look good. So whatever your reasoning and the degree of uh, off-roading you're going to do with that Jeep, we want our bigger tires. We just need to understand bigger tires do limit up travel. So let's deal with that. Let's talk about how to have full suspension flex and use on that Jeep without the tires rubbing. What is the optimum amount of bump stop that we need to dial into that combination so that everything works. We don't want to limit the up travel unnecessarily, but we also don't want not enough bump stop so the tire is jamming in and knocking the flares off or cutting the tires or bending sheet metal. How do we optimize that? So that's what we're going to talk about in more detail here today. So back to this, this scenario here, when we're talking about tire to fender clearance, and again, these fenders have been trimmed. This is a, a JK flare that we cut on another video. You can see on the website on how to trim flares on a JK. But you can see how much room we gain here when we trim that. Almost three inches of extra room for tire to fender clearance. If this was stock, then we have to tune our bump stops to keep the tire from hitting the flares at that point. But since that's been taken out, now, that's the better part of three inches worth of bump stopping we don't have to do to that vehicle that we can now let the tire move further up. So, tire clearance fenders, fender flare trimming, again, the video's on our, our website or YouTube channel, as opposed to spending hundreds of dollars on aftermarket high clearance fenders on a JK if you want to just trim yours. Uh, for an afternoon in your garage, you can make a whole lot more room and get a lot better suspension performance with less bump stopping for those bigger tires. A thing that's really important to remember here is the travel from here to here, and then you look in the coil spring and you've got this much bump stop if it's maybe depending on your parameters, you think that's not enough and it, is, it looks obvious that you've got way too much bump stop because you have this much room. And that would be true if you're talking about straight up and down suspension travel. Just driving down the street or dips or bumps, that whole axle is moving straight up and down. And so when the bump stop hits in there, you would think there's too much room for the tire out here still. But the problem is these Jeeps are going off-road. We're going to disconnect the front sway bar on these vehicles. And again, that's something to take into account when you're tuning your bump stops is are you going to disconnect the sway bar or not? If you're going to be on any kind of trails, I would highly recommend that you just disconnect the sway bar, get the suspension articulation to keep those tires planted on the trail. But when the suspension articulates, now we've got a different dynamic at work here. Instead of that axle moving straight up and down, and hitting the bump stop like this, and there's a lot of gap out here where the tire is, now when we articulate the axle, when it hits the bump stop, it's going to roll around the bump stop. So the tire is actually going to go further up into the fender when that axle articulates than it would moving straight up and down. So that's where a lot of people miss the, miss the mark and they don't understand that they're just looking at one gap and not taking into account the articulation factor when you're tuning bump stops. And if you're going to use your Jeep in that environment and disconnect the sway bar and let that suspension articulate, then you've got to tune the bump stops to the maximum parameters and, and travel, whether that be straight up and down or with that suspension articulating. You've got to test and tune the bump stops to those parameters either way. I've had... <laughs> I've had some guys over the years, uh, there were some kits out there, I won't name the brand, but they had extraordinarily long shocks. So on droop, you know, the further the shock will go down, assuming certain other parameters will allow that, you can get a lot of droop out of the suspension. The problem with that though is the longer the shock is extended, 
the longer it is compressed. And I've had guys tell me, well, I've got 33s on my TJ, and I didn't extend the bump stops at all, and my tires don't rub at all. I've had full flex on that thing, they did, and this is one of the issues that causes all these misunderstandings. But what happened, the shock was so long that at full flex, the shock bottomed out, and the shock became the bump stop. So the shock was way too long for the application and the tires that far away from the fender and it can't compress any further because the shock was just way too long. So these are things we want to understand when we're setting up the parameters on these vehicles that everything works together. Now on a low center of gravity lift these days, which we like, it's a smaller lift if we're running a bigger tire, then we're gonna to tend to have a ratio of up travel that's not as much as the down travel. But if we're gonna bump stop to keep a big tire off of the fenders, then we can also have more shock length to work with, which can give us more down travel. You don't want to bump stop for a really big tire and a really short shock that has plenty of compression on the shock, but you're bump stopping just for the tire. So we want to optimize the shock length, the tire size, and the fender well opening, hopefully where all of that is kind of com coming to a full compression point about the same time. In a perfect world, that would all be perfectly the same. There are too many differences or variables in parameters. You'll, you'll find that one is probably going to happen sooner than the other. But that's what we want to kind of keep everything tuned in a realm where everything works together. One thing, too, to understand is, and I like, the front of these Jeeps, there are options like on a TJ or an LJ. You can replace that upper bump stop. You've got the factory cut that comes down inside the coil spring and it bolts to that bump stop tube, but then your factory rubber wedges into that cup and that's your bump stop. And then as the suspension moves up and down, the bump stops bottom out in the spring perch down at the bottom. They make polyurethane replacement bump stops that are hard poly and they're longer. So you just yank this one out, the factory one, replace it with the long poly one, and you've got a longer bump stop. I'm not as big of a fan of those personally. I prefer a softer factory type bump stop in there because if you do get into the bump stop, if you bottom out, if you have a hard poly bump stop, it's a real abrupt bottoming and you can feel that. The factory bump stop, this bump stop will compress with the weight of that vehicle coming down on it. That will compress all the way up to the cup. So there's another two inches or so when it's in there, give or take, of suspension up travel that you have. And it's got a little cushion there and I like that. There's a lot of times you'll get into the bump stops whether on the trail or hitting a big bump on the street and you won't know it because of that cushion, if that cushion factor is there. Kind of a poor man's air bump, if you will. I like that, that's my own personal preference. Also, when the suspension droops, there's a coil spring around that bump stop, and as the suspension droops, the control arm angle swings down. When it does, it pulls the spring back, and then the spring can run against the bump stop cup and the bump stop, so I'll take a lot of mine and grind this front lip off that cup so it kind of glides through. But that long poly bump stop's just hanging up more in that coil when it droops. So I like the stock length, stock style of bump stop on the front of these Jeeps as much as possible. But that's just another factor when a guy manages, he says, I've only got this much bump stop before I bottom out. Well, that's not true because of the compression of that bump stop. You've actually got this much bump stop before so there's more travel there than you think there is with a factory style bump stop because of the compression of that bump stop speaking of air bumps there are air bump stops that you can get that are inflatable you can pump air into that bump stop and it has some cool advantages but one of the disadvantages they're expensive they're pricey but they'll give you some cushion on the last part of your suspension travel so that if the suspension's bottoming out it'll help cushion that last little bit of travel. But for the money, we don't use them very often. And personally, if you're gonna have air bumps, you really wanna pay attention to the spring rates and the shock valving that you're using with that so all of that works together as a system on that vehicle. 
For me personally, I would rather again use a factory bump stop that has a cushion in it. If I want to dampen that last little bit of travel and I'm going to be into bigger money, I'd rather do it like a BP-51 shock like this JK has. It's a adjustable shock. It's basically racing technology for your daily driver and the last part of the travel compression of that shock is much more aggressively dampened than the middle part. And I would rather do it with a shock like that, have full adjustability of all my shock. The BP-51 shocks are adjustable both on rebound and compression. So we have the ability to really, to, I, that's just my thing. I would rather do it that way and stay with the traditional bump stop. But however you want to do that, really want to pay close attention to tuning spring shocks and air bumps if you go that route. Okay, so let's talk about parameters on these Jeeps. I have guys that call and they'll ask me, how much bump stop do I need for a six inch lift or a four inch lift? The lift is not the factor, the primary factor that we're going to use to determine bump stop length and how much bump stop we need. Your parameters have more to do, I mean obviously the Jeep will have a lift, but on this Jeep with these parameters I have set, if I have a two inch lift or a four inch lift, when the suspension bottoms out, it's still at the same place as far as tire to fender clearance, shock up travel, etc. So the bump stopping is going to be the same for those parameters regardless of how much lift I have within a, a certain amount. So our parameters. Number one is tire diameter. The bigger, you know, this tire has this much room, but if I put 42s on here, I'm going to have a lot less up travel because of the tire size. So tire diameter is one of the big parameters. The next one is wheel back spacing. How much back spacing do I have? How wide of a stance do I have? That is going to affect how that wheel interacts with that fender well at certain points whether the steering is turning, bottomed out, the wheel back spacing has something to say there. Also the shock length, how long is the shock? The longer it is obviously open, the longer it is compressed. A shorter shock open is going to be shorter compressed. One of the things we do a, a lot with old man emu suspension, old man emu shocks, one of the things I really like about those shocks is for a given extended length, I haven't seen anything that will go as short as they do and still be as long at the, that same length. I really like those, not to mention the technology that's in them. Our favorite shocks that we use the most are old man even. But shock length is one of those parameters. Then your fender welds, your fenders, your flares, are they stock? Have they been trimmed like this? Or have they been replaced with an aftermarket or high line fender? That is a very important parameter. Uh, you'll see some fender flares you can buy in the aftermarket that come up even higher and they give you more room. More room for the tire means more room for the tire and therefore less room that you have to bump stop based on those parameters. And the last one, if you have a TJ, for example, we do a lot with small body lifts. If I have a one inch body lift on this G, I've just created another inch of room between the tire and the fender that I don't have to bump stop for. So then those are the parameters, tire diameter, wheel back spacing, shock length, fender well opening size, trimmed aftermarket, body lift or not. Those are the parameters. And this is why so many people misunderstand. They'll say, well, I've got 33s and no bump stops, or I've got 33s and two or three inches of bump stop. And, and they don't understand or they can't come to a consensus on what the right amount of bump stop is. It's not the tire size or the Jeep, it's the parameters. Everybody has different parameters on their Jeep. So what we're gonna do is we're going to determine, and you're going to determine, what your parameters are, what's your tire size, what, how much lift you have, again, it's not as important. Fender well opening size. Once you have all your parameters set the way you want, then the key thing is to tune the bump stops to your individual parameters, such as they may be. That's the key. So we've got a bunch of bump stops laying out here today for different vehicles. We've got and there, there are variations on this, but we've got bump stops here from JKS for the new JL Wrangler 18 Plus. We've got some old man emu extended bump stops for the JK Wranglers.
We've got a variety of bump stops here for the TJ or LJ Wranglers. We've got our factory bump stops. We've got our DPG NHL bump stops, very popular. We use these quite a bit. These work on the front uh, of a TJ or an LJ or an XJ. Over here we have XJ bumps. On the rear of an XJ, these are our DPG uh, adjustable bump stop plates. Uh, we sell a lot of these for the Cherokee because a lot of Cherokee lift kits, for some reason, they come with an extended bump stop for the front, but they don't address the rear. You have four wheels and four tires and four fender wells and four bump stops. Just addressing the front is not going to be enough, so we want to address all of that all the way around. So we're going to talk about all of these today and how they work, how to tune these to your individual Jeep's parameters. So we're going to take a look under the JK and our XJ over here and just get a look at what makes these things work and how to tune the bump stops again to your particular Jeep. Okay, so we've got the front wheel pulled off of our JK Wrangler, and we're going to use this as our example. There are slight differences, but in as much as they function, the JK Wrangler front, the TJ, the LJ, as well as the XJ Cherokee are all going to be the same for our purposes here. So we see you've got your coil spring in place, you've got your factory bump stop here in the top, we've got that tube that comes down again. 97 through 19 Wranglers still have this same type of a design. Got the factory rubber bump stop in the bottom. So what we want to do here, this coil is not that big. And again, when the suspension droops, it wants to sweep the coil back toward the bump stop. So what we want to do is build the bump stop up from the bottom. We're going to leave all of this just like it is from the factory and add a bump stop to the bottom. Now, there are different bump stops you can use. This is an Old Man Emu bump stop made for the JK, and you put it inside the coil when you're installing it. And prior to doing that, you, down inside the bottom, you may not be able to see it on the camera. We drilled a hole in the spring perch down on the bottom of that coil so that we can bolt that bump stop down to the bottom, and it's made to do that. Uh, the problem is that's a bigger bump stop, that's two inches plus, which I think typically on a JK, for example, you'll see that pretty commonly. I think it's pretty much for the guy that's not gonna trim his fenders and wants to run 35s, it's a pretty common. But again, as your parameters vary, your bump stop size needs to vary. This would have to go in the coil spring when you install it. So before you fit that in there, you've got to set this inside there, and then you can go back in once it's on there and put a ratchet through the coil spring and tighten the bolt down. You don't really want to put this on first and then have to install the coil because now you've got to put the coil in up here and compress it up over two more inches worth of bump stop to get it in place. So I like to just put it in the coil and then install it. But another option and a better option is our DPG NHL extended bump stops. These are one inch thick, and yes, for, for those that are wondering, these are regulation NHL hockey pucks. They're one inch thick, they're stackable, obviously, and if you want to do this inexpensively, you can go buy hockey pucks and drill them yourself and put them in there. We use hockey pucks, we've been doing this for over 20 years, we buy hockey pucks and send them to a machine shop and we actually have them drilled. You could drill this on your drill press, it just won't be as clean, but we have them drilled and then we also have them counterboard so that the head of the bolt sits down in there so that when it interacts with the bump stop up there, it doesn't rip the factory bump stop. So they're drilled and then counterboard as well. And then they're stackable and the nice thing about these is I can go through the coils without having to pull the coils out. As my parameters change, if I want to add or subtract bump stop, I can do it an inch at a time without having to pull the coils back out. That's really nice. So whether you want to do this yourself and just buy some hockey pucks or whether you want to get a nicer actual machined version of these, we have these available. And again, they're stackable an inch at a time. On the JK, these coils are a little tighter wrapped. I could probably wedge it through there, but right now the vehicle weight is setting on the axle, on the springs. All I'd have to do is just droop that down a little bit. I can slide these right in and out through the coils and then go through there even with a quarter inch drive ratchet, retighten my bolt, 
I can tune the bump stops without having to pull the coils out. This is the same whether you have a JK or a JL Wrangler or an XJ Cherokee or a TJLJ, any of those, these bump stops or any of them on the market will work for this. One nice thing on the TJ Wrangler is the cup up here will unbolt and this is true on the rear also and we can put a spacer above the top but in the rear that's how we do that on a TJ but on these Jeeps we've got an inch at a time on the bottom and then on a TJ if, let's say you need another half an inch or a quarter of an inch you can unbolt the cup from the top and just put some washers in there bolt the cup back up and then put your rubber back in the cup so you can make minute adjustments. On the TJ and LJ, that's pretty nice and pretty easy just with some washers from the hardware store. You can go an inch at a time as needed and then final adjustments above the cup with a few washers. So that's our front setup. These bump stops aren't tuned yet, although because of the extra clearance we've made on the fender and I'm running the shorter BP-51 shock, I am just about able to compress this suspension and shock combination fully without having to add any more bump stop. I think I'm gonna end up needing about an inch all the way around on this just to be safe. The longer I go on the shock, bigger on the tires or less trimming, the more bump stop I'm gonna need. So I still have all of that factory up travel there, even though I'm running a longer shock and a bigger tire. But these are all gonna be the same, whether it's again, XJ, TJ, LJ, JK, JL. The principle here is the same and our DPG NHL bump stops will work on any or all of those vehicles. All right, let's go to the rear of the JK and take a look there. Okay, so we're on the back suspension of the JK Wrangler here, and the JK and the JL Wrangler are very similar in that the rear bump stop here on the factory is not inside the coil spring. On the TJ and LJ Wrangler 97 through 06, this is inside the coil. But on these Jeeps, it's external, so the bump stop is out in the open, makes it very simple to adjust the bump stops on these vehicles. This is an old man emu bump stop that's made to bolt right down to the factory plate. It's already pre-drilled. Of course, it's a preset length as well, which doesn't give you the ability to adjust that. But this one would just bolt right down there on top of that factory plate and extend your bump stop that way. This is one from a JL, but there are some brackets out there for the JKs that are made out of just a steel tube and they bolt down to the factory mount as well. These type of mounts, if you needed more, you could always drill a hole in it and put a hockey puck on there and extend it more. Or, you know, you may need to get creative on this as your parameters change, different tire sizes, fender well openings. You may want more or less, but you've got the factory bump stop here on the top. You've got the mounting plate on the bottom. You could put just a one inch hockey puck and adapt it to that bottom plate down there. So. Again, you may want to be creative, but you can add or subtract the amount of extra bump stop you need. And I like to keep the factory rubber. Keep in mind that under full suspension flex, that rubber will compress almost all the way up to the cup. This is not missing up travel. It's just dampened up travel when you get into that bump stop that's going to start slowing down and offering more resistance. But at full stuff, it will compress that bump stop all the way up to the cup. So that on the, the front of the JK, the TJ, LJ, XJ, all the same principle. You can add or subtract one inch pucks at a time. On the rear of the JK and the JL, you can build this up from the bottom with a variety of different things. A little imagination goes a long way there. So we're going to move over to the XJ now on the rear and look at a different bump stop setup for that. Okay, so now we're going to talk about bump stop adjustment on the rear of a Jeep Cherokee XJ. This is a leaf sprung suspension, so it's a little different setup here. Our biggest selling product and the one we've used the most for longest is our DPG adjustable bump stop plate. And that's this steel plate. It's laser cut 3 8 inch high grade steel plate with a gusset welded on the back. So when we set that on the leaf spring and it it basically replaces your upper U-bolt plate. The U-bolts come up through this instead of the old plate. That gusset sits right against the back side of the leaf spring. You bolt it down. Now we've increased the distance from the axle tube up to the top of the leaf spring 
So we've increased our bump stop that way. On this particular Jeep, depending again on your parameters and how much more bump stop you need, I don't like to build it all from the bottom or the top. So we have some options here. On our bump stop plates, it also takes our spacers. You can stack one or two of those on the plate as well to build up from the bottom and then that contacts the bump stop on the top. In this case, this particular Cherokee, we've got a tube welded here. This is a different setup. I've been running it for a long time. The factory bump stop would normally bolt to the unibody up here in place of this tube. On these Cherokees over the years, if those have been sitting there and that bump stop disintegrates, a lot of people want to replace that and we have these available. But a lot of the time when you go to pull the bolts out of this bump stop from that unibody, the bolts will break. And then you're, do you drill them out and tap them? Do you, how do you, for me personally, I want to build a bump stop down a little bit from the top. So I've just got a two inch square steel tube welded to the unibody. Very easy welding job. There are two holes drilled on the bottom of the tube and we've got a universal Daystar polyurethane bump stop without any extensions on the plate to get the bump stop that we need. Again, th this is an older one. I need to replace it. It's getting pretty soft, but it will compress also, even though it's polyurethane because of the way that that's cut. But if you have the factory bump stop, you can add our bump stop plates and then add the spacers to that as needed an inch at a time to tune the bump stops on the back of a Cherokee. So you can use the plates only. You could use a plate and tube combination with stock or something shorter. These bump stops could be cut or trimmed as well if they need to be shorter. So there's a number of options there for tuning the bump stops, but the bump stop plate is a real popular item, real integral part of doing that, especially if you've got the factory rubber in place in the top. Okay, we're gonna take a minute and talk about rear bump stop adjustment on a 97 to 06 TJ or LJ Wrangler. This is a front coil and this is a rear coil. So you can see we've got a big diameter difference here. So on the front coil, again, we talked about as it sweeps back, we don't want to build too much down from the top. We like to use our bump stops on the bottom of the coil and have the factory bump stop in the top. But on the rear, we've got a lot more room inside this coil. So your factory bump stop, there's a tube that comes down inside the coil and you'll see that bump stop sitting down inside here and it's wedged into this factory cup. So when you're extending the bump stop on the rear of a Wrangler, the best way or easiest way, you pull the rubber out of the cup and there's a bolt up there. You'll undo the bolt and the cup comes loose. And then you've got any number of different spacers here that go above the cup. Our DPG bump stop spacers are two inch or you can do inch and a half or old man Emu has little FK16s. So we've got several different lengths that we can work with on the rear bump stop to extend it down as needed. And since the coil is so big, extending it down from the top won't cause an interference issue. So real simple to simply space that down, use the proper size longer bolt, which in our DPG bump stops comes with that. Remove the rubber, undo the bolt, put whatever spacer in top, replace the bolt, replace the rubber. You've just extended the bump stop in the rear of your 97 to 06 Wrangler. Again, if you really want to dial it in tight, you can use whichever one of these gets you the closest. And then if you need a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch, whatever, get some washers at the hardware store about that size and add those in there with that for really small adjustments. And you can do that on the front of a TJ as well above the cup. On the XJ, this is welded on. On the TJ or LJ, you can actually unbolt the cup and add some washers in there on the front as well as the back. All right, so we've talked about bump stops and parameters on these different Jeeps. So now let's talk about once we have our parameters set, you've got your tires, your wheels, you've decided whether you've got your flares factory trimmed or replaced, all your parameters are set. Once that is done, the last step then is to tune your bump stops to your particular set of parameters. So how do we do that? Basically, the Jeep will tell us what it needs for bump stop. So what we want to do is we want to take the Jeep out at this point, 
Disconnect the sway bar, assuming you're going to do that. If you're never ever going to disconnect the sway bar, you could do this without doing so and bump stop accordingly. But if you're going to do that, disconnect the sway bar and let's go flex the Jeep. A note on flexing the Jeep, do so at your own risk. We see guys go up RTI ramps, they go too fast or they hit the gas instead of the brake and you'll roll that Jeep right off that ramp and this, this, you do this at your own risk, this is on you. But this is how you do that. I've had guys tell me they had the sway bar connected and drove it up on an oil change ramp and the tires didn't rub so they thought they were good. That's nowhere near the kind of flex that these are capable of and an oil change ramp's not gonna get you up high enough to do the job. We need to find either an obstacle, uh, an RTI ramp, or back in the old days, I used concrete ramps at loading docks. There was a couple of spots that we had uh, permission to use, and we would go use that. But you need a ramp or a ditch shaped, not, not a wide one, but a fairly, fairly narrow ditch that you can drive through at an angle. And it doesn't take much of a depression like that you get your front tire on the far side of the ditch and your back tire over here on the back side, it'll flex that Jeep up a lot. So we want to flex the Jeep next. And I like, if I'm using a ramp, because you want to be able to drive up the ramp and a little bit at a time. And I like to have somebody watch if I'm not sure, but watch that suspension. If I drive that side up the ramp, this side's going to flex or vice versa. So we want to drive up a ramp and we want to start compressing this suspension. If this tire is going up or compressing, then this same tire on this side is going to be drooping and the opposite rear tire will be compressing. So a little bit at a time, we want to go up the ramp and compress the suspension, let it flex. Remember, the axe is going to come up, hit the bump stop, and continue to roll around. So we want full flex or until there's a point of contact. So if you have a buddy that's watching, you can see a little bit at a time. As soon as you get close, stop, put it in park, pull the e-brake, and get out and take a little time and look underneath that Jeep and see what you've got. The Jeep will tell you how much bump stop it needs based on your particular parameters. And if you're not exact on the bump stop, yes, it's better to over bump stop than to under bump stop. If you have less bump stop and the tires jammed into the fenders, you're bending sheet metal and cutting your tires, you really don't have any bump stop. So if you're going to err on one side or the other, err on having more than not enough. But as the tire is compressing, once we get real close, we're going to get out and look. We're going to look at our tire defender clearance, where it's at at full stuff on both sides. We're going to look inside the springs, outside or wherever, depending on the vehicle we're working on, and see how much of a gap do we have in the bump stops. If it's a factory bump stop and it's resting on the rubber, remember, you've still got compressed. You want to jam that bump stop way up hard until it is stopped and that's where we're, what we're looking for we also want to make sure our shocks still have we don't want the shock to hit first before the tire or the bump stop bottoms out because then the shock is the bump stop that will damage your shock so in an ideal world again the tire however tight you want to string this the tire should be just short of touching the fender and the shock just short of being compressed. And at that point, the bump stop should be jammed hard, stopping everything just before either of those are done. One thing I like to do, and I mentioned Old Man Emu shocks earlier, they have a traditional, this isn't an Old Man Emu shock obviously, but it gets the point across. Old Man Emu shocks have a traditional stone guard and I like that. I like a traditional stone guard like this because it protects the shock shaft but it's open on the bottom and allows any, it doesn't accumulate moisture inside the shock. And another thing this is, allows us to do then is we can compress our shock. Find a side you can see here. We're just going to compress this shock all the way down until it's sh completely shut. And I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to draw a line right underneath that guard on the shock box. And then, old band emu shocks being yellow, that this shock is a little slow and it's probably seen better days. But now we've got a mark on our shock right here so that when we flex that and we've compressed that suspension, I can get under there and I can look at the bump stop inside the coil and see how compressed it is. I can look at that shock line 
and see where is that can? Is it close? Is it all the way compressed? And now the Jeep is going to tell me how much bump stop it needs. And at that point, you can decide if, you're, if the tire is right at the fender and you've got a lot of shock travel left, you could go to a longer shock then and change your parameters, longer shock, and get more down travel out of the suspension based on the shock. Or if your tire is two inches away from the fender but the shock is bottomed out, you've got to ask yourself at that point, do I want to go to a shorter shock? So these are the things you want to look at when you're tuning the bump stops. So basically go and look inside the front coils and the rear suspension, check the shock travel, check the bump stop clearance, and check the tire to fender clearance, and tune accordingly. Let the Jeep tell you, based on your own particular set of parameters, let that Jeep tell you exactly how much bump stop it needs to be correctly tuned for your particular parameters. All right guys, so hopefully that helps clear up some of the uh, misconceptions about bump stop tuning on these Jeeps. Again, it's a, I don't know if it's a topic that will ever have clarity across the whole internet world, but it's not a real complicated subject. Take your particular Jeep. We carry all of those bump stops at DPG Off-Road, a different variety of things. If you have questions about your Jeep, feel free to call us at DPG Off-Road. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have about tuning to bump stops in your particular application. So from Dirk at DPG Off-Road, thanks for watching. God bless America, and we'll see you next time.